your reputation is only thing that you have. So now right. bump everybody else looking. I'm going to know that I didn't do nothing. I'm going to know that I didn't respond in a way I felt was up to my standards. And so yeah. I, I must do this regardless of a thousand people looking or nobody looking. So, so yeah, break that down. So the man bumped to you and uh, he bumped it to me. So I walked up to him, you know, he was walking down, you know, through the bill. I said, Hey, check this out, man. You just bumped it to me. It don't matter if you're red, green, black, blood, crip, anything around it. You're supposed to say, excuse me. And he politely informed me that when you see bloods pushing, get out the way. <laughs> And I didn't know how to respond, but in a violent nature. Right. And next thing I know, I was sitting in San Quentin. I was supposed to went home in March. I went home in September the next year. So let me ask you, because I've been in situations, you know, where I've seen individuals get caught up in situations like that. So how did it feel 10 days later, knowing that that was the day they were supposed to call your name and be sending you home? Did you regret what you've done or what was your mind state? My mind state was like, damn, man. <laughs> I was going home this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was like, and then when I got to say, Quentin, shit, ain't nobody going home. <laughs> right. I'm cool, you know? Yeah. You know, I'll fit a parole shortly, you know? Yeah. So, but it still was, you know, my family expected me to come home. I had children in, you know, but my family used to ask me when you're coming home. I used to always say what we said in the, the air that I went to prison when these uh -huh. white folks let me come home. Yeah. That's what now, we used to say. White folks let me come home. Now, you know, and, and I spoke on this earlier uh, sometimes in some of my stories, you know, like me, I'm, be, I'm from a small town, man. And, uh, you know, so I may, there may have stints that, that I've done three or four years, five years, man, and, and and not seeing anyone who I grew up with. But by you being from a larger uh, place, more populated, you know, I'm pr pretty sure every penitentiary you hit, you had several individuals who you knew growing up with or at least was from your hometown. Does doing time around people that you know, do uh, does that make doing time a little bit easier, especially when we've accepted that prison is a part of the gangbanging lifestyle? Do you know... To me, and I used to be this man like this. Say we both grew up together, we fought from the same set, or we both known each other in the cripping world, and we knew each other from the streets, the juvenile halls, and so forth. It's harder on you because my expectations of you are higher. Right. If we had just met in prison and we'd been in a couple of joints together, and the dude said to you, and fuck them glasses you got on, they ugly as fuck. <laughs> You can laugh about it. Right. Now, if you a homie that I grew up with and you're from the same town as me or the set and the dude said that, I'm like, uh, what, what are you talking about? You want to uh, say that to you? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like, you know, I used to be the ignoramus. Not the shit started, but like, you ain't gonna say nothing to me? All right, I'm gonna deal with you. I like, call you, what you telling my homeboy his glasses look ugly for? What you mean by that? Now I'm stepping up. Right. So it's tricky, but as you mature, things, you know, different, different, but it was good when you see a homie like, like, I, okay, like I remember when, when I got to Tracy, me, Killer from 107, Hoover and, and Kat from 60s, all of us was in East Hall together. That's the orientation to Tracy. And uh, so it's funny, man, we had our property. All of us had on blue Levi's, this is when you got colors. We all had blue Levi's on, white Chuck Taylors, and, and penalties for people don't know what they are. They're like, uh, what would you call the penalties? What kind of shirts would you call? But they're not actually shirts, plaid shirts. You know, with the so we had on our penalties, and we all put blue rags on our head because we'd heard Tracy was against all Crips, mm. and we'd already broke cell and made weapons out of, in the cell. All three of us hit it, so mm. we come out, and it's a guy named Bone BGF. He'd been down twenty some years. He had a black skull cap on with a red bandana under. So when we see him coming, we're about to ready, we're about ready to and throw him over the tier. Right. And he like, hey bro, I'm Jama, you know, uh, they don't be wearing blue rags all up in here. And all. We like, man, we ain't trying to hear that. And we push to the yard. 
I already got in my head, he's first when we come back, if we make it back, because we don't know what's out here. Uh -huh. We hit the yard. It's like 400 homies on the yard. So we walk in the track to get to the black weight power, but we decide to go the long way around so we can let our presence be known and we can assess the situation and we can see from a distance if any adversaries are coming towards us. When we get to weight power, it's like, Bright Dog, kill him, cat, come, we over here. Da -da -da -da. We know damn near everybody on the compound. Uh -huh. And so we say, what happened, man? We heard this was a whoop de whoop stronghold. And they said, no, the homies ran him up out of there when they killed the homie. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay. They was like, yeah, the homies, you know, came together. The staff started shipping them, started bringing in homies. And that's when Solidad turned into a stronghold for them guys. Because they had killed one of our guys in the field house, which was a big old, like, recreation area in Tracy. And so it was our stronghold. So I got there. I'm like, seeing homies from everywhere that I know. And who I've been doing time with. Mm -hmm. That situation was a good situation because that was our stronghold then. You know, so you know it, it, it differs. So when you say the, that they killed one of our homies, are you talking about the uh, the Bloods had, had killed the Crip, or was it the BGF? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the Bloods killed. The crip. So there was there was so then there's there was definitely some vicious Crip on Blood Wars as well uh, in prison during your time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, 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 I remember me, Tiny Rest in Peace, from P.J. Watts, Doug from Block Crip, and myself. We kicked off a, a ride with the Bloods. We took off one we, for no reason. We just took off. We were wild, you know. Uh huh. Just, just, and, due, just due to the fact that them being Bloods. Yeah, we was like, fuck it, you know. That's why the drop of had anything could happen. So we took off, and we downed him. And another blood got wind of it. And so we went to the weight pile to tell the homies. And the bloods mounted up about 50 deep and came to the weight pile. And one of them said, we just want a little bright dog. And Nugget from Raymond Avenue said, you ain't going to do shit to dog. And Bob Caffrey 60 said, you ain't going to do a motherfucking thing. The next thing I know, it kicked off right there. Big old riot jumped off, huh? Yep, with us and the Damus. You know, I end up going to the hole. You know, got away, but you know, you know, I go. Uh -huh. Went to the hole, and uh, that was that. You know, then we got to the hole. We 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 worked it out. We talked it out, and the majority of us came back. Right. And then leaving, I end up leaving for getting off on a, a southern a serenial. And then I end up leaving for getting off on one of them. So, uh. I was going to ask you what to your understanding, cause, and I get a lot of questions about this a lot, you know, because by the time I hit prison, man, um, you didn't have dudes who are who are outwardly representing uh, the BGF, you know, black gorilla family. They had started validating if they could if they could prove the um, the prison system could prove that, you know, a person was a, a BGF. He was going to get an indeterminate shoe. So when you was doing time back then, to your understanding, what was the beef between the BGFs? And the Crips about what was all the you know the turmoil about why did why the BGFs didn't like the Crips? Well, okay, when Bloods initially came to prison, a lot of them became BGFs. I mean, BGFs embraced them. BGFs said blood, they said blood, and the Crips was on their head. So some of them became indoctrinated with the BGFs, right? You know, they became affiliated, associated, affiliated with the BGFs. Uh -huh. So. When other bloods came, they were like, hey, man, come over here. So us as Crips would see, here's a blood now who's in here for killing the homie. But he's a BGF now. So we openly disrespecting this blood and BGF because we're trying to entice him to, you know, flinch. Uh -huh. So, and then the BGFs tried because they were used, so used to being the vanguard of the brothers. Because you got to remember, this started with the Solidad brothers leading up to where the BGFs became the BGFs. Right. Not that that brother stood up for all rights for all brothers in prison. So they had been used to for years of being the vanguard of the blacks. Then here it is, you got these wild young dudes coming through here like, you don't represent us, you don't run us, you don't rule us, you don't dictate to us. What's happening? Right. 
And so that came to class. And then y'all got them, you know, and we'd use the derogatory terms towards the Bloods. Rocking right. with y'all. So that right there created a friction that's ongoing all the way into this day, but it's not a friction as to where it's a, a adversarial friction. Mm. It's just a friction of that's them and we're us, but it's a unification when it comes to a, a common adversary, which is the Serene. Right. And, and so basically the BGS was basically upset in a nutshell that the Crips wouldn't fall in line into what they considered representing their blackness. Right, 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 right. right. Uh -huh. Precisely. And then they advocated, but they were hypocritical to me, but they advocated unity, but they were the same ones, pressure and dudes and so forth. Right. You know, but they advocated unity. Did, did you ever, did you ever during your state time, did you ever have any, any incidents with any uh, uh, white, white uh, convicts or ABs or, you know, any, any type of thing like that? Yeah. Uh, you remember them cats used to have Vikings tattooed all over and all that junk? Right. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, the hundreds, which is a faction of, 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 of Crips affiliates, which consists of the Raymonds, 11 trade blocks, so forth. You know, they call them the rolling hundreds. Right. The hundreds of street UGs, whatever, not for your audience. It's just a different faction in the hundreds of LA. In the hundreds, which means denotes the streets. 110th Street denotes the streets. Right. So well, they got into it in Ironwood on Sea Yard with the white boys. So all the Damus were over by the commissary. Me, Snow, baby Snow from 690 East Coast, Lil Frost from 89, and a couple more East Coasters were in front of one building. So we were waiting for the hundreds. They were walking around. They got into it with the skinheads. They were walking laps and we were waiting for them to take off because they had to kick it off where everybody was strategically around the yard. So the hundreds take off, bam, over there in like front of three buildings. The buildings are one, two, three, four, five. And when I look over to the commissary, all the bloods take off. So we take off. So now I got a pistol in my hand, thumper. This white boy hit me so hard <laughs> from the blind side. <laughs> that, you remember the old cartoons with the stars? Yeah. <laughs> All he had to do was go, and he could have disarmed me and I would have failed, right? And it's, I'm going, cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going like this. And then Lil Frost, catch, bow, slide. And when he slide in my moment, I came back to my senses. Yeah. You know, but yeah, so that was with the white boys. But this dude, he had Vikings all over. He had a long beard. He hit me so hard, chill, that I should have been on my back. Uh huh. And uh, so that was my experience with them. That's the only experience I've ever had as far as any, any drama with them. And, and, I, and I have mentioned, you know, the dangerousness of riots and stuff. And some of my other stories and and like you say what's so um i guess dangerous is that you can't focus on everything it's, it's people everywhere and you know and you can you can be blindsided and in the event he had to knock you down it could it, it could have became extremely you know dangerous and problematic for you and stuff and so um when those when those uh type of riots jump off um what's going through your mind because i've been in one two three four about five or six of them the first time I looked for homies, that was a big mistake. You don't look for nobody. You deal with what's in front of you, you know? Right. It's like that movie Braveheart. You don't go looking for nobody. You deal with your situation. Then after that, it became about the third time, not a normalcy, but a know what to do. Right. To the extent you can know what to do. It goes from oh, panic right. to a to a certain type of calmness now because you're you're Calm. more familiar right. you're more familiar with it you know because I remember we did have one we did have one uh, on the yard we had a new crib named Slop Dog from a neighborhood crib out of West Virginia and a white boy walks right up in the middle uh, uh, that's what they had those uh, Nazi lowriders uh -huh. and took off on him. 
And I'm on the basketball court, and I'm saying, why are two white boys over there fighting amongst the homies? And then the homies took off. It wasn't no more question in my head. Uh -huh. It was run, aid, and assist. Right. Run to the melee, aid, and assist. And so I did that. And uh, then I found out later what it was. And, and that's what I was going to ask you. Did you ever have any, did you ever find out why, what made the, the white guy just walk up in the middle and, and just uh just punch the dude? Or what was that, what was that about? He was a prospect for the Nazi lowriders. And he wanted to show the purification of the white race don't mingle with the black race. And so he uh, walked up in the midst of the homies and fired on the white boy. Oh, because the white dude, the white, the white dude was a crip. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So we flighted their asses on the yard that day. And uh yeah, that was my only encounter with them. Those now, two encounters. Now you you also you also done a whole lot of you also done a whole lot of um fed time. What's yeah. what's the difference between state time and fed time? I've never done any federal time and, and do you feel one system is uh dangerous more dangerous than the other, or, or what's your take on that? Well, I've been in the state. And I've experienced the wars, right? And in the 80s, the wars were dangerous. But the wars, to me, and I just did 18 years straight in the feds, the feds are more dangerous than the state. Mm -hmm. You have a global environment for one. That's for one. Okay, envision audience. For 36 cents a day, you can feed this village. Now, think of the kids that grew up in that village and what they see on those late night commercials they used to have. Uh -huh. Look how poor it is. Look at clips of certain villages in the motherland in Africa. Imagine how poor they grew up. Look at clips of Soweto, the ghetto. Imagine how poor they grew up. Look at clips of Bosnia. Imagine how poor they grew up. So you have these people that grew up Basically, it's boy soldiers. Uh huh. And they came over to the United States in their criminal element for the most part. Right. But they grew up harder than we could even imagine. They grew up in sheds, shacks. Right? Uh huh. So now you have this global setting. And then you have dudes from every other environment. You have dudes from Tupelo, Mississippi. To Toronto, Canada, from Compton, California, to Compton, Michigan. You know, you have dudes from Lake Elsinore to Lake Michigan. So you have a setting of men, and then you have the men that come from the lowest common denominator criminality, and they kill it. Mm -hmm. And the feds aren't like to stay where they lock this culture down, that culture down, the whole joint going locked down. Doesn't matter who killed. But I've been in federal joints, we was three murders in one week in USP Victorville. In and, one and so, week. And so what what is that what is that like, man? Like you say, when you're in you in USP Victorville, man, and it's three murders going on in one week. What is what does that do once again, you know, for your mind state, man? Do you go into survival mode? I mean, because I've heard that every the violence is much more extreme in the feds i heard that there's more you know there's more convicts with knives in the feds do you do you uh do you agree with that or, or what's your take on that i agree okay when the deuces go off which are the alarms everyone i'm gonna stand up this is what everyone does they run to the window at usp victorville and it'll be a different culture next to you whatever and everyone is like this looking out the window oh let me lean down they're looking out the window going like this the person next to them Right. So and they're looking to see who comes out of that building across the hall. So if a white boy coming out of that building. And a black thing came out on the gurney. You taking off on that white boy that's standing right. next to you. Automatic. No questions asked. You just finished the stabbing. It's barbaric. Uh -huh. It's so barbaric. When I first came there, my homeboy site who got pot princes, y'all need to support him. He out there in Riverside pot princes in the Pearl. You know, he does things for marijuana and stuff like that. But anyway, as soon as I got there in the building, he gave me roughly a couple hundred dollars worth of currency, which are stamps in the feds. And he gave me an ice pick. 
as mm-hmm. soon as I got in the building. They said, you good, cuz. You know what time it is, but it's on around here. I said, all right. So I put the currency in my pocket. The cap the ice pick, because we used to have little caps for them so they wouldn't stab you when you tuck them. And I tucked the ice pick. He said, this will go through a floater. What that means is they can go through the metal detectors. Oh, okay. And I was like, all right. I said, I'm going to hit the yard and see who we're here. He's like, all right. And I bounced. So it's barbaric. I'm in the kitchen one day. A white boy has a knife taped to his hand with duct tape. And he has a string around it. And he hit this other white boy. He'd been down 22 years. was going home in about three days. He hit him in the neck. And he just kept hitting him and kept hitting him and kept hitting him. Some of the uh, artwork that I have on my body, this white boy drew. He hit him because he was doing artwork for blacks to get tattoos. Wow. So that's crazy. So it, it came to their attention. They didn't even want him because, you know, I, of course, I know that, you know, other races don't tattoo on other races. Well, other races don't tattoo on blacks in the state. You know, I know you you'll have Hispanics who will do a tattoo on a whites or whatever. The only type of other race that a tattoo on a black is maybe an Asian. But so you yeah. say it just it just came to the attention of the white convicts that this dude was basically we call them patterns. This dude was making yeah. tattoo patterns for blacks and they yeah. they killed him because of that. Yeah. And the dude, and I remember, I remember the the, the, the program minister in the kitchen was like, stop, stop. And the white boy just was, wow, wow. And I'm looking at this shit. I'm like, damn, he leaking him out. And I paralyzed him from the neck down. Oh, so the guy ended up surviving. Yeah, but he was paralyzed from the neck down. Wow. Then they had another guy. White guys go hard on child molesters. This white guy, he's like two years to the house. They put him in the tank with a child molester, you know, in the transfer tank. He took the cuffs, chains, and strangled the dude in the tank in front of the police. Police didn't have the keys to get in. Killed mm. the dude right there. So I'm you know. and I'm sure earned himself a life sentence when he was two years to the house. Yeah, yeah. Then I was on the bus with a white boy, who, my partner named Soup, Superman. He come out his cuffs and butcher a child molester on the bus. Hmm. Yeah. And and so I heard that the politics in the feds is is slightly different. Um, they they run by they run by states. And correct me if I'm wrong. So is all the all the Crips from California united in in there, or how does that work? Or is it all okay. the gang members from California, or? No, first off, this is our politics. No heavy drug usage, mandatory workout, no homosexuality, no being in debt. I'm coming for you. That's how I ran the cars I ran. And that's how most of the cars, all the cars, no homosexuality, no drugs strung out, or we getting rid of you. And no playing with your Peter. Because dudes, they call them gunners. They jack off to the females. We getting rid of you. Uh-huh. So politics of this, all Crips in the Crip car. We don't respect a lot of out-of-town Crips for this reason. You could be from Wyoming, and you can come and say, and you got Crip tattooed over your eyebrow. You can say, I'm on Wyoming time. I'm on state time. I'm not on Crip time. I'm off count. That's what they call it. So I used to say, off count, don't count. See, they have an option to be on state time or to be on gang time. So that's why we didn't respect a lot of them. They used to say we try to use them. We didn't try to use you. We knew our background. So when we see you, we like, here, you up the bat. We want to see what you're going to do. Right. Because we need one of us to do it any given time because that's how our culture is. So it was like Cali dudes always want to use you. It's not true. We just want to see what you're working with. Handle your business and we accept you. We don't know if you're up under our umbrella for protection because you might have been on state time in another spot. Mm-hmm. Crips and Bloods, for the most part, we rock together. Scripts, Bloods, Bay Area, and the West Coast. That compromises the California car. So basically, just everybody from everybody from um, from California was under one umbrella. So how did that how did that work? If there was an issue, like say for instance, um, would a, the California Blood would the California Crips deal with it, or would they get to would they talk to the California Bloods and have them take care of that prospective problem or a respective problem? Well, give me a scenario. Like say for instance, you guys are all part of the California car. There's a there's a there's a blood who who owns a gambling debt. Would you guys send the California bloods to clean it up or it didn't matter? You know, because like say for instance, uh oh, no, me, no, go no, ahead. No, no, no. I can give it to you. Okay. 
said, it's Damu jumping out there and he in our car. I'm going to go to their homeboys. I'm like, man, your homeboys deal with the situation and we're going to deal with it. Right, okay. That's their situation. Uh -huh. You know, that's outside of California. Now, inside of California, we have our respective cars, but we'll come together in unity if it's an outside force that's threatening one of us. But outside of California, we're all in the same car. Literally. Right. Well, no, that's that's what I was talking about. Say okay. it was the California blood. Say you guys have, you know, uh, within the cars, 20 California bloods. It might be, you know, 20 California Crips and a California blood does something within the California car. Would the California Crips deal with them or would you guys go get at the California bloods and let them? The bloods will deal with them. Right. But if they don't, then we'll deal with them. Uh -huh. And we can go at it with y'all. It don't matter. Right. Because this is for, the, this is for nothing bigger than the car. But if I'm walking with a blood and he gets into it, I'm into it with him right there. Right. And and, and then a blood can consist of, he doesn't even have to be a California blood. If he's in the blood car, he's a blood. Right. See, the Crip car, the California car goes Crips, Bloods, Bay Area, and parts near. So what I mean by that is the, you're the blood car. You can be a New York blood. You can be a New Jersey blood. You can be a Mississippi blood. You can be a... a Akron, Ohio blood. You're in the blood car. Mm -hmm. So you're really in the California car, though. Right. So so um, I hear that in the Fed, sometimes you have a lot of uh, beef between California and D.C. And, and, and is that true? And you had told me that you had uh, you had you had, had an altercation with an individual from uh, from D.C. So can can you break that down for us? OK. In the past. It used to be California and DCs used to clash. Crips, really, not California Crips. See, I can only speak on the Crips because we were so much alike. We used to clash with one another. That's <coughs> now, my altercation was, and a dude tried to tell me I'm a liar and you don't know what you're talking about, bro. You a liar. You know who you are. A brother, two DC dudes had robbed a dude who was in our car named Brody. They didn't realize he was in our car. He was from Oklahoma. So, they came and got me. I went to the kitchen and I went and got it to DC guy. And I told him like, Hey man, you know, some of that shit's my shit. Da, 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 you know, you know, and he doing things in the building. We need that shit back. And so Brody subsequently got into one of the dudes in the kitchen. I think car and they both went to the hole, whatever. Right. I think it was a PC movie Brody did, but that's neither here nor there. And so me and the guy went and he went and got the zoom zooms and wham whams and what have not. And I told little, uh, G Mac, who was a Kingsman out of Vegas, go get that bag. And he went and got the bag, and me and the dude shook hands. I told him he's a good man, and that's that. You know, that was the situation there. Another time, the situation I had was uh, when one of the cats was in our car from Baltimore, and he decided he wanted to jump ship, go in the car with them. And I'm like, that ain't happening. Not after you learned all our secrets. So I talked to a good dude named Titus and a good dude named Goody Bay from D.C., and uh, we resolved the issue. You know, so that's that, you know. So dudes, you know, one DC cat is telling me online, ah, you lying, and uh, I don't have no reason to lie, bro. See me, one thing with me, I'm a roll call names. Who was there, when it happened, and when it happened, and where it happened. Mm -hmm. So you, DC dudes, you know, and unfortunately, you know, we lost a homie to them, but you know, that was in Victorville. You know, for years, they couldn't come on the line. And I was one of the guys with some of the guys we had to mean like, might as well let them come on the line for what? What about our homies is back out their ways? Right. So, yeah. So, so, um, I got a quick question. Uh, how, so how does one from Oklahoma or Baltimore or whatever, uh, become part of the California car? Well, you don't, if you're a crip or a blood, you do. Okay. If you decide you want to be on count, Right. Okay. Then you fall up under that Crip or that Blood banner, which is Crips from California and Bloods from California's structure and rules. But now, do you? Do, so, is it possible? Like, okay, um, mm -hmm. they have like Crips from New Jersey or New York, and 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 they push with the they push with the uh, New York Crip car. How does that work? I mean, so not all Crips run 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 with the California Crips, right? You ain't got no choice. So if you're we a crip, gonna, you're going to run with the California crips regardless. I'm from. Okay. 
It's our car. And it's not taking nothing from them in other geographical areas. It's our car. It is a crib car. It is not a different state crib car. It's a crib car. It's like I used to tell the homeboys when I was in Tierra USP it was when it was a regular USP. You ain't from no other sets. You from THP, C, Terre Haute Prison Crips. I told him the same thing when I was in Polak. You Polak Crips. Leavenworth, you Leavenworth Crips. We don't have no individuality. We up right. under one unit code. So if you're a Crip, you, you, you're just pushing with the Crips, regardless of where you're from. All Crips is together. Yeah, but the correct structure of Crips come from where? California. California. Right, okay. And you're going to follow then, California rules and guidelines to this and then so also you mentioned that um that an individual who lost his life in victorville uh, at the hands of someone from from dc what was that can you give us any um information on what that was involved what it what it you know how did that how did that play out was it a, a beef behind it or it was it was a monetary issue uh-huh and yeah it was a beef behind it it kicked off right there johnny on the spot and the D.C. guys couldn't come on the line for five years, literally. Mm. I mean, D.C. guy came to Victorville USP. They put him in the hole. Uh -huh. And so, like I said, we sat down one day, myself, K-Head, uh, Bill from 60s, uh, quite a few of us, you know, sat down. It was like, you know, why ain't the D.C.'s on the line? You know, we didn't been in spots with them. We ain't had no problems with them. Woo, woo, woo. And so we basically told, you know, send words to the administration, man, did y'all let the DCs out the hole? And then they, they start coming to the line, man. D Lo, you know, he was at the meeting, I believe. You know, uh -huh. so that you know, but they killed the fish. You know, I wasn't there when fish was killed, but I know the whole logistics of it, why it happened and everything that happened, you know, and I just put it like that. Right. So, you know. And that was it. You know, we got into it, and they couldn't come on that line for five years. So I've heard I've heard a lot on on YouTube about Bloody Beaumont. Have you uh, ever done time in Bloody Beaumont? And if That's so, I had a crib car in Bloody Beaumont. That's where I left from. So is that is that prison as vicious as they make it out to be? It was. It was. It was a beast, but it was right in my alley. Uh -huh. You know, but I ran a crib car with an iron fist. With an iron fist, but we all ate. You know. And and so how 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 you know how does that like how does that work um in there? Is it is it any type of uh in terms of, of the DPs, which is dis dis disciplines, is a person possibly given like a verbal warning or is it automatically violence in the event a person breaks, you know, one of the um the homies just think I was an asshole because I used to say, if we got to talk about them, get rid of them. Hmm. So basically, no, zero. no mistakes, huh? Zero, poly, zero, zero tolerance for bullshit. Yeah, I, I used to say, if we got to talk about them, get rid of them. It would take some pretty strong advocates to persuade me to discuss you. Right. So when you did get rid of an individual, was it, was it always through violence? Was he given a, was he given a chance to, uh, to leave or would automatically do just, uh, was sent to take care of him in a physical manner? My preference was just get rid of me violence. But what I used to do is a lot of times I'd say to my number two, deal with that shit. And I'd respect how you deal with it. Or if the individual was in front of me that we were talking about, I say, look, homie, your best bet is to get on right now. Uh -huh. Don't collect your two hundred dollars. Don't pass go. Get on right now. Right. What I mean by that is, don't go get your letters from mommy. Don't go get your pictures. Don't go get your property. Get on right now. Right. And if you decide to buck, eh, he'd get what he was looking for, and it wouldn't be nice. Now, in in terms of, of the different black cars that was in the federal system. Uh, which one would you say was, you know, the uh, the most feared or definitely a, a worthy adversary? D.C. And the, man, thumbs down, man. D.C. D.C., man. Uh -huh. Anybody say anything different, I'm going to tell you a liar. D.C. is the most vicious car other than the Crips 
in the bloods. DC is the most vicious car in the feds, followed by GD's Vice Lord Stones and what have not. Now, were, were the were the um were the DCs most vicious on sheer numbers or just on sheer vic viciousness, or was Man, it a combination of the two? DCs don't need numbers to be DC. So they 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 straight as we would call them in California. They straight riders. They riders. Mm -hmm. They out their goddamn mind. That's what I loved about them because I'm out of my goddamn mind. <laughs> I swear to God, they woo, they something else, boy. They a mess. Hey, you know, uh, before we get up out of here, man, I had a I had a buddy, man, and I won't I won't put his name out there, but man, he told me, you know, he told me you was also a straight nut and, and uh you know real cold back in your days, man. He said one day he was a youngster, you pull up in a in a car, man, you know, with one of them nice California low riders shiny up with the Dayton's and all that, and sold him the whole car for about a hundred or two hundred dollars, man. What what was going on there, man? Well. At that stage in my life, man, I was like, man, these bloods are always shooting at me. They're trying to kill me all the time. I'm getting tired of shit. So I'm going to start robbing them and taking their shit since they already tried to do shit to me. So I pushed up on a guy that particular night. He had on a hat with an affiliation on it. He had on a white T-shirt and some beige khakis. He had a chick in the car. And I said, where you from, man? You know? And he's like, what? I'm like, where you from? And I had a phone phone man. <laughs> And so the cat says, uh, man, man, I, so I tell the bar, I said, get out. And I go get in the passenger seat. I'm like, now, where you from? He's like, cuz, I'm a crip. I said, you ain't a crip. You can't even say cuz straight. Get the fuck out. Tell him get out. Take his car. I take the bra purse, throw it at her. Say, I ain't robbing you. Take his car. I didn't want the car. Mm -hmm. If he would just tell me where he's from, I was going, in my head, I was going to give him a pass. I just wanted to park him in front of this chick. Yeah. But since he didn't tell me where he's from, I took the car. Pushed up on the home. He said, man, give me a couple hundred dollars for this. You got a whole car. Sold him the whole car, huh? Yeah, I didn't care about the money. I was on it's the terrorizing ship then. So I took about 10 cars that week from, from Damu's. And, and 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 so what's your take, man, on today on, you know, on um on gang banging out here in California? Because it, it's definitely got got away from the ga traditional gang banging in the sense of the word and the um just the it, it seems like you know, um it's cool just to do crazy stuff, man. I mean, I'm talking about not even crazy, nonsensical type of stuff, just shooting up cars with women, kids. I mean, you know, people not necessarily caring who they in, injure or kill. What's uh, what's your take on all that? My take on it is it's senseless. It serves no purpose. It's hustling backwards. My sense on my take on it is they allow the rappers to influence them as opposed to where they used to influence the rappers. My take on it is it's, it's watered down, it's polluted, it's corrupted. Because you have keyways and down moves rocking together against other keyways. My my take on it is that it's just it's just a, a dead end game, man. Yeah. That's my take on the dead end game. Right. And so by you know, by you definitely being, you know, by by you definitely being well known all through Compton and, and states and, and, and federal prisons and stuff like that, man, what would uh and all the time that you've served what would be your advice, man, to uh, you know, to some of these youngsters, man, who may who may find this type of lifestyle like it's intriguing or alluring? Um, what would be your advice to them? All right, and I'm gonna say this, and some people may take this wrong, and I don't care because I don't work with Phillies. I'm not gonna tell you to denounce your neighborhood. I'm not gonna tell you to quit claiming your neighborhood. I'm not gonna tell you to do none of that. What I am gonna tell you is kill as many of your adversaries as you can kill. Do it up close and personal. Blow their whole brains out. Once you do that, I know we don't have to worry about that shooter coming over and killing an innocent woman, a child. You're going to get all day because they're going to tell on you. There's cameras everywhere. So my advice to you is get as much pussy as you can get. Leave behind some children so your mother and them can look at something that looks like you. When you get to the... You hear me? Uh, um, yeah, you, you, you had uh, you had went out for a minute. Get to the county. Stab up as many individuals as you can stab up. So when you get to prison, your name will be solid. When you get to prison, unless you're a homosexual, learn the art of masturbation because you're going to be doing it the rest <laughs> of your life. Okay? Learn. Now, before you do any of this stuff to get there, go sit in your bathroom for 24 hours and then sit in there for another 48 hours 
and then look in the mirror and say, this is where I'm going to spend the rest of my life as a gangbanger. Because there are no successful gangbangers. It's not a lifestyle. It's a death style. So that's what I want you to do if you want to gangbang. Kill as many as the top shooters as you can. So they can quit killing us in our community. Get all day, which means you're never coming home. Learn how to masturbate. Get as much pussy as you can get. And leave some babies behind so your mom and daddy can look at something that look like you. That's my advice to all new gang members. Wow, that's that's you know that's real deep, man. That's real deep. I've never heard nobody break it down like that, man. And so, uh, man, it, it's definitely it's definitely been a, a pleasure having you on here, man. I like to thank you for tapping in with me. Um, anytime you want to come back, you already know. Matter yeah, of fact, uh, I know you you had reached out to me about seven seven or eight months ago, just out of you know just I, I think you had liked some of my content, man. And so I definitely wanted to um, thank you and you know uh, just for. You know, reaching out, man, reaching out and, you know, and you invited me to come hang out with you on Clubhouse and what you guys was doing there. And I, and I appreciate all that, man. And so before we go again, is there a, you want to shout out, you know, anything you got coming up, your social media, anything like that again? You know, my social media is OG Brian D, host of Urban Real, Realness, a.k.a. Urban Real. Then Melly Mel, the hood postman. My girl, Rini Loke, y'all watch her in the future. Watch ODM Slim in the future. His wife, Momo, in the future. Watch them. It's going to be some exciting things coming. I'm going to leave it at that, you know. Uh, and it's all good, man. You know, um, it's all good. That's all I can say. I appreciate you. I respect you, man. I respect the mileage you've made. I'm going to shout you out when your music is ready to drop. Shoot it to me. I'm going to drop it on every platform I'm on, chill. And uh, more brothers to emulate you. We two brothers have been through self-imposed obstacles and through the ringers. And look at us now, man. Most definitely, man. It, it feels living. good, man. It feels good. We ain't just alive. We really live. Most definitely. Hey, man, like I say once again, I want to appreciate you for coming on, man. I wish you the best. You know, I definitely keep in touch in the future. And uh, you enjoy the rest of your day. All right. All right. Peace out, man. One love. All right. Peace, brother. One love.